What I have here is an assortment of some of the thumb screws that I've made over the years. They're simple to make and can be customized to any thread size, overall diameter, number of scallops, basically to any style that you want. And polished brass adds a nice look compared to the steel or plastic ones that you can order. The larger ones here are currently on the copper shop light that I made a video about making. The two in the middle are for the dials on my milling machine handles, and the smaller ones of similar style are for the dials on my lathe. Today I want to make another thumb screw similar to these. Not an exact match, but similar size and style. We're going to start with some 5 8 brass bar stock, so let's head over to the lathe and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is face this off and then turn down about 3 8 of an inch down to a diameter of 164 thousandths, which is the major diameter of an 832 screw. I'm going to make it a few thousands under, probably more like 160, just to give the tap easier start. Now I'm just going to use an 832 tap and the tailstock to support it and keep it as square as possible. Now I'm going to turn down a portion to a diameter of 7 16 which is what I want the overall size of the thumb screw to be. That's plenty close enough for what this is. Now I'm just going to bandsaw this off and then we'll make an arbor to hold it by the threads. I'm going to do this step off camera. All I have is a scrap of material in here and I'm going to drill it and tap it 832. And this is going to be an arbor to hold our thumb screw later on. Now we're over at the mill and I have the 5C collet indexer bolted down to the table. It's got a 7 16 collet in it, so we can grab right on to the OD of the part we cut off. And when I bandsawed it off, I cut it off about 100 thousandths longer than it needs to be. And that way it's going to let me hold on to it for this step. I have this set up for six indexes, so it's going to cut six scallops into the thumb screw. So it'll be similar to this small one. That's purely up to preference. You can set it to whatever you want. This other one has just four, so it just gives a different look or style depending on what you're going for. So let me get the part in here and a little tighter shot and then we'll start cutting it. 
Now I'm just going to adjust the table so that I take a slight cut when I bring the end mill down. And then I'll index this around to each six positions and make that same cut. It's easy to bring the cutter in closer to the center line of this and make the scallop deeper if you want to. So I suggest starting with a light cut versus going too deep and messing it up. It's also worth noting that you don't have to try to center this or anything like that. Because you're just using a round cutter on a round part at any distance away from the center line, whether you adjust the table in the X or Y direction, it doesn't matter. So I can tell that I'm going to want to make this deeper, so I'm going to move the table over just a little bit and keep cutting. Here's the part with the scallops cut as deep as I wanted them to be. Now I'm just going to thread it into the arbor that I made and lightly face off the end of it until I get rid of all this extra. You want to be pretty careful when you're doing that because you don't want to put too much pressure on this and snap the head of the thumb screw off of the threaded part. Last step in the lathe is just to chamfer the top and very lightly chamfer the bottom edge. Then all I do is use the arbor that it was on as a handle so I can polish it up. You can spend as much or as little time on this as you want depending on what finish you're going for. I usually just spend a few minutes to shine it up. I'm not overly concerned with the exact perfect finish. That's about all it takes. So just for comparison, here's the new one along with the one we were copying. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching.